Hi everyone and welcome to our video tutorial today where we're going to be taking a look at user access within the new book system and how we're also able to manage the access that each user actually has. First of all, when you're already logged into the system, if you are wanting to update your own user details, you can quickly do so in the top right corner where it states your initials. Simply hover and then click on your user profile. Once you're on this screen, it's then going to allow you some options on the top right where you can edit your username and that's when you can update details such as your email, cell phone, set a new password and verify and it's also where you can see what access or what user profile you're currently set up on. It is really important to ensure that all users have an email or a cell phone number in case you forget your password as when you are on your login page to the new book system, if you have forgotten those credentials, there will be a button called forgotten password. You'll then receive either an email or an SMS advising of the token to reset those details. Separate to your own user details, if you are wanting to locate any existing users in the system, if we head over to our main menu search in the top left, that is where we're going to find a list of users. So once we click onto here, and you're on the screen, we can see all usernames that are currently set up within the system. If you ever need to deactivate a particular user at your property, as an example, maybe they're no longer employed with you and you want to ensure that they're not able to continue to log in, what you can simply do is tick the username and with the selected user, simply select update details and change it from active to no. Once we've updated this, we simply confirm and that will ensure that that user is now unable to access your new book system. You are able to view a list of deactivated users by clicking show deactivated. If you simply want to update some specific user details for another team member, you can simply click on the username. Again, that's going to take us to the view of the other users details. And in the top right, we have the edit user option. This will allow us to again update any of those fields that we need to adjust. We could even reset their password if they're having issues logging in and we have access to configure this for them. Once we've changed those, we simply save and those details will update. Separate to editing an existing user, if you simply need to create a brand new user as you maybe have a new staff member starting, all you need to do is head to the add user button in the top right hand side. Once you click on here, you need to set them with a username that they will log in under. Again, following all of the other details that are required in order for them to log into the system. We also need to note down what user profile you want to place them under. So again, this particular section is actually going to relate to what areas of new book do they need to see and what processes do they need to complete. So you do have the ability to either use some pre-configured user profiles that we provide you with, but you can also customize those and create your own ones as well, depending on the different departments or teams that you have. So if you already have these preset and you know what you need to put them under, you would simply select the profile and save, and that's going to ensure that when they log in, they're only going to see the areas of the system that they need to, such as the housekeeping list or maybe your in-house bookings or the booking chart. Separate to the users that we can see here, the secondary area that I'd like to delve a little bit deeper into is the actual user profiles. So if you're wanting to potentially do a little bit of an audit of who has access to what, or you're wanting to create some new user profiles for new departments, or you would like to gain your managers additional access to complete certain processes within the system, what you can do is head into the menu and locate our user profiles page. Once we're in here, you're going to see that it has a list of existing user profiles that are set up for this property. I would like to point out that the super profile is something that you're not able to edit. It is a new book profile, and this is essentially a great profile to be put on if you're a manager or owner of a business and you require full access to the system and would like to automatically receive new features if we roll new products out that have additional privileges or access required to them. So anyone on that will automatically receive that. Any of these other ones are ones that you would need to manually manage if you want to enable or remove specific access. So having a look at a particular one here, we've got one in the system called reception staff. I can see there are 330 
to privileges that are enabled. So they've got access to complete 332 specific things in the system. Currently, we don't have any users assigned to that profile. However, I can see my housekeeping profile here has 27 privileges, so it's quite stripped back. And we've got one user that is currently attached to that. We also have maintenance below where I can see they have a bit more access and we've got two users that fall under that profile. So both of them have the exact same access to complete certain maintenance related tasks in the system. If I'd like to have a look at the privileges or potentially give them more access, I can simply click on the profile. Once I'm on the view of this, you'll be able to see it shows the users that are currently attached to this. It shows previous users that were on this particular profile and we then have the Privileges tab that actually displays all of the unique access points within NewBook. So we have various tabs that you can see at the top and it tells you how many features within each one have been enabled. So if we'd like to update any of these and maybe we want some of those red ones to become available to that particular user, we simply select Edit Profile and that's going to allow us to search for various privileges in the system. So I can do it tab by tab, so I could potentially click into this section here, and if I actually wanted this particular user or users to have access to all of these fields within here, I could say enable all contact tab, and that will automatically enable all of those. Then if there are a couple areas that I wanted to remove, I can just simply click on the ones that I would like to take off, and when they turn red, they've been updated successfully. I would then simply save, and once I've done that, the two users assigned to that profile will automatically have access to those additional privileges within the system. If I wanted to create a brand new user profile, maybe for my maintenance manager, so maybe they need even more access than my current maintenance team members, what you can do is when you view an existing profile, I have the ability to duplicate it. So what it does is it keeps everything that is currently active, keeps the name, and I might just say maintenance manager. I can then go through again and have a look at each of these tabs and maybe enable the ones that I want to. Otherwise, I could also look for additional features or pages in the system by using the search option here. So if I would like them to have access to various charts in the system, I can search for the word chart and then go through and enable the ones that I would like them to have access to. Once I save, I now have a new profile which will be available for me to now attach to either an existing user or when I create a brand new username and new book, I can then assign them to this particular user profile. If we head back to the user profile page, if at any point you would like to deactivate any old profiles, you do also have the ability to tick these from here and actually with those items deactivate. Alternatively, you have the ability to bulk update certain privileges against multiple profiles. You can also remove bulk privileges. So if I would like to potentially add privileges to those three profiles in one go, when I head to this page, I've got the ability to go through and either click them one by one or enable within each tab, or I could even enable all privileges within each and every single option here. Once I do that, if I confirm, you're then going to be able to see that each of those have essentially been updated with those additional privileges. As we now have a new user profile, if we wanted to go and add that to the correct username or update multiple users to now fall under that profile, we can again head just to that users page. Once we're on here, we can then select the team members that fall under that and with those selected items, update their details and place them under that new profile that we've just created. Once we confirm, again, that will ensure that they're now moved on to that additional profile with the extra access. When it comes to users logging into the system, we also have a Azure AD login option, which is really helpful. So for any of you who happen to use Outlook as a email provider, you can actually authorize Outlook to connect and log in without the need for entering your password. So if that is something that you have enabled on your login page, when you're actually viewing this screen here, generally you have your login where you enter your username, password and login code. However, if I head to Azure AD and simply enter the login code for my property, provided my username is set as my email address, I'll simply be able to log in 
and that will access my property immediately. That does bring us to the end of our video tutorial today on users and user access. As always, if you do have any additional questions surrounding any of these areas, remember to click into the question mark icon in the top right corner and it will expand to show you helpful articles based on the page that you're currently viewing.